Okay, in this quick demo, I want to show you how the Veeam ransomware solution can give you this great outcome of recovery. Now, what I'm going to actually show you is backup storage stored with two different copies on immutable targets. One copy is on the hardened Linux repository on premises, and a second copy is in the public cloud with uh, a Veeam ready object with immutability uh, credentialed target. So, this particular one is Amazon S3, it can be a lot of other ones. Now let me walk you through the scenario. I'm going to jump into the lab. So what you're looking at, um, I came home or came back from lunch and I have this alarm here from Veeam called possible ransomware activity. So the first thing I want to do with this is look at it. This is a very important alarm. You can see I've got a bunch of them triggered through my email here. This is my real Rick Vanover email. If I'm going and looking in this uh, area of my environment and if I take a look here, I can see that some alarms have been uh, triggered here and you'll see that possible ransomware activity. I'm very concerned about that. So let's go over into VMware and take a look. So this is the area of the infrastructure and again those alarms will come in and um, give you these types of bits that you care about for the different parts of the infrastructure. This is a, a V app that I care about, sorry a resource pool that I care about. Let's talk about the per point I care the most about which is my database server. So let's open this up and let's take a look. So why would I have gotten that possible ransomware activity alarm? I don't know. I want to just take a look. And oh, all my files have been encrypted. This is a bad thing. Okay, so this is that moment when your um your 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 heart hits the floor. Okay. I don't trust anything going on on this system right now. Uh this particular threat I believe is the Phobos ransomware. Uh, I got to shut this stuff down now. Okay, so this everything in this area has been hit. So I got to start doing an isolation situation here. So let's go ahead and start powering things off the hard way, the easy way, whatever way you want to do it. Um, that's one of the first things you do in a ransomware situation. Start turning things off. So I'm going to start this process right now and I am going to get everything off that's on in that uh, environment here. Let's just get them all off. And I think the last one, it's already off, okay. So then I'm gonna go over to Veeam Backup and Replication. What's very important to notice is I'm keeping these backups in this immutable scale-out backup repository. I have one on-premises extent, which is that diagram I showed you, the Veeam hardened repository, and then the capacity tier in the public AWS S3. And if I go again back to Veeam 1, I want to just double check everything. In this environment, jobs are good. Everything across the board has been running. That's great. This is the backup target where these backups go. Everything looks good. And especially in the public cloud, you'll even see I have immutability marked for eight days, right? So these double play immutability on premises and in the public cloud, I'm feeling really good. Let's go ahead and drive a restore. So I can go back to the uh, main menu here, and I'm going to drive a res restore. Now, I'm going to restore from backup, and there's so many ways to recover, but I feel that I've contained this threat. I've double-checked with the business that everything else is fine. Now, I have a couple of different ways I can get out of this problem. Instant recovery, if I want to just boot up from the backups, if I want to restore to the cloud, I can do that. I'm actually going to show you something kind of cool in the middle here, this entire VM restore. Um, this is a scenario that makes sense when I know that I have um, really contained the issue. And so I'm just going to take this whole pod here, which I, I ran earlier today, and all of those VMs that were in there. Let's go ahead and put them all in there. And the most recent restore point, I do know that that one is something that hasn't been here a while, Ktron. So I'm actually going to remove Ktron because I know that that's an obsolete system. and Again, I have so many great options. I'm going to choose one right here, the quick rollback, which, again, if I verify that everything's okay, I'm just going to revert right back to. I can go somewhere else, including the cloud. I can go to a different cluster right here if I wanted to. Or I could even do instant VM recovery if I didn't trust any of that stuff at all. But I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and launch this restore. And one of the other things I can do with the restore process is this next option, the secure restore. 
I can scan this virtual machine as they're being restored to look for the threats with the latest antivirus definitions, anti-malware on the Veeam infrastructure, completely independent of what was happening in the production environment. And if I do see a threat, I'm going to have some options here. One is proceed but disable the network app adapters, and the second is I could just wholeheartedly abort the recovery if I found a threat. But I'm going to go ahead and do a scan and we're going to let this go. And I do have some Linux systems. That is one catch of that particular uh, capability, but no big deal in this situation because the threat was on Phobos, which was uh, a Windows threat space. So let's uh, go ahead and just go through that. Now, if there is something still powered on, it's going to fix that for us. All good. Let's do it. And then I have this other option here to power everything back on. Now, I'm actually not going to do that because I want to be really explicit about that. So we'll let this go here and I'll pause the video. But the reality is I have very easily and very quickly launched a multiple VM restore of a whole bunch of virtual machines that were impacted by that ransomware. If I go over here, I will soon see that job starting. You'll see a lot of processes underway right there. So we'll let that pause for a second and we'll come back to the video. And as I go in here, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of stuff working. These FLRs, those are file level recoveries. That is where the secure restore is going to happen for the Windows systems. And then the full VM restores will proceed the rest of the way. While the restore is running, I went ahead and showed an example here. This is one of the servers that are being restored. It took a few minutes to do a full scan of that flat file system and there were no threats detected. So that's a really good way to know that this particular one of those multiple VMs that are being restored, they won't be um, reintroducing a threat. Okay, so all of these VMs have restored here. You can see they all were successful. And if I go back into vSphere, you can see that they're off and ready to go. Now I can start powering these VMs on to uh, reestablish the control I want. Let's start with the database. That's the one I care about the most. So let's go ahead and power that on. And while that's happening, I want to show you a couple other things. So I'm going to go back over into Veeam 1 and you'll see that uh, a couple things going on in the in the environment I care about. Everything's still good. But I want to highlight this report called the Audit Restore Operator Activity Report. This is a report that uh, gives you really good information about your um, environment. So let me go ahead and um, I've already rendered the report. So let me uh, go down here. Click. So um, the restore operator activity report. Let's open that with Adobe PDF. And I think this is an also a very important thing. You can see that the logging of that restore operation is in here. You'll see 10 of them came from me. Whereas we have one or two other or two other people doing restores through the month, whatever. And if we look back in the details of what is actually being restored, you can get very good information about that, which I think is very important for um, just an audit trail. Let's go back into the vSphere client. So here's that database. Remember we had that, uh, that threat on the desktop saying all of our files were locked. And let's go check it out. And let's log in, not as that user, but as myself. And let's get the right password. Most of the time is most of the time correct. And we are back in business. Now we did have that, which is normal. It was a security issue. I'm just going to put ransomware recovery. Now, how did this go so well? How was this so successful? Well, what I want to highlight is over in Veeam Backup and Replication, the immutable scale-out backup repository, this double play immutability gives me a lot of confidence. So if I look at my individual repositories, let's take a look at that hardened Linux repository, that VHR, Veeam hardened repository that I have here. This is where my backups go first. This is on any Linux system, which is the Ubuntu system there. Um, this one is a lab, so it's not huge in terms of terabytes in the bit, but any Linux system where you can provi provision uh, direct attached storage, maybe a private SAN, things like that, are going to be the good candidates for this. And right here, 
make backups immutable for 14 days. So easy to do. You can do this with no additional Veeam cost. I'm also using the V11, or I'm sorry, the Veeam XFS file system integration, that fast cloning, that's a storage efficiency. So I get a storage efficiency and immutability right here. Now then I'll also show you the capacity tier. This is my offsite backup. These are also marked with immutability as well. So if I go look in here, I can see that I'm doing the same thing. I'm marking these backups as immutable for eight days. So I have some backups on premises immutable, some backups off site immutable. Coupled with the scale out backup repositories, double play configuration, this is the way. This is a really easy way that you can have very high confidence to recover data in a ransomware incident. You can go and check out more at the veeam.com website.